your Bible fingers ready, and uh, if it's a paper Bible or if you scroll, get ready to go there. We're going to talk today simply about a subject that is vital for the believer. If we don't get this, we're going to miss out on the greatest move of God, love of God, passion of God that he has for the church, the body of Christ today. And it's this. I want to talk to you about a more Christ-like way of thinking. A more Christ-like way of thinking. Not long ago, <clears throat> I was uh, watching a television program, and I... Uh, saw one of those guys that was on Jurassic Park. I don't know his name. Probably when I say this, you all will know his name. I never picked up on his name. He was in a bunch of movies uh, in The Fly, I think, and that guy. Yeah. Uh, and he was, he was like a scientist in Jurassic Park. He was in a generic commercial about apartments, and at the end of the commercial, he says, change your apartment, change the world. Mm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> However, he probably got a lot of pointers for people changing apartments, you know. <laughs> Amen. And all good if you live in an apartment and you change apartments, that's great. That really it is. But I was studying this message and... Uh, and that commercial came to me, and I thought, no, 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 that's not how the Word talks. The Word says, change your thinking, change your world. Am I right about that? Now, if anything, listen to this, these open remarks, if anything is ever going to change in our lives, it is imperative that it start with changing the way we think about that particular part of our lives. You see, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks, so is he in his heart, excuse me. As a man thinks in his heart, in his spirit, in his core, so is he. The Bible has a tremendous amount to say about our thought life. Yes, Lord, I'll do that. Father, I pray over this message. Lord, I ask that it permeate every life. That we have ears to hear. That we might apply this, God, and be greater than we've ever been before in our spiritual walk with you. Everybody says amen. amen. So we just learned the Bible has a tremendous amount to say about our thought life. Our thought life, believers, is not supposed to just be running rampant, doing what it wants to do. Our thought life has everything to do with change in our lives. You want something changed, you're going to have to change the way you think about it. See, our thought life, though, let's do some teaching. It originates in our souls or our soulish realm. Uh, to break that down further, let me teach right here. Some of you ought to be taking notes unless you have this down pat. We are three-part beings. Number one, we are a spirit. Number two, we have a soul. So we are a spirit first. What's going to live in heaven forever? If you are born again, saved, you've been washed by the blood of Jesus, what will live forever is your spirit, come on, and the soulish realm will be there, but then it will be completely impacted by God. Amen? Until then, we are a spirit we have a soul, and the soul is made up of three parts. Say three parts. The three parts of our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. Ha, huh, I'm just an emotional wreck today. Ain't supposed to be. I ain't getting no help right there. 
I got to find somebody that gets this. I said, we're not supposed to be an emotional wreck. We're not supposed to have our will over God's will. And we're not supposed to let our thought life just do anything it wants to do. Say amen to that. I will give you a remedy, of course, by the time this is over. And number three, we live in a body. So say it with me. I am a spirit. I have a soul. And I live in a body. What's the lowest form of that? To most people, the, if I follow you around, hello, the body or the flesh is in control. Prove that to me. You give it and I give it everything it wants. All the time. Hello. Watch now. The body is supposed to be the lowest form of those three. The flesh. But yet, are we supposed to take care of the flesh? By all means. Now listen to this. The human mind is where reasoning or decisions are made. So it stands again to reason. If we're going to experience any change in our lives, it would be necessary for us to first change our thinking about whatever it is we want to change, whether it be our health. If we want to change our health, we don't just go like this, watch. My health change, am I right? That's hocus pocus. If we want to change our health, what do we have to do? We got to start eating right. If we want to lose weight, we can't just think about losing weight. We have to first think about the process that we're going to put into play to lose the weight, to be more healthy. Am I right about that? Next, our finances. If we want to change our finances, we got to think along lines of being in a better position to change those. Am I right? Come on. And probably... 90% of us here would say, oh, Lord, Pastor, my finances sure need to change. Am I right about that? Uh, everybody's quiet in the house of God. Now, if you want to change your education status, what do you have to do? You got to think, right? You got to change your thought process to grow in, an, in our education, to know more, to have more knowledge. You still here with me? Now, I'm getting somewhere. There might be a little shouting later, and even if not, it doesn't matter. Uh, in our relationships, if you want to have a bit, look at your wife and smile real big or your husband, come on. If you want a better relationship, what are you going to have to do? Do you do like again, like this? <laughs> do we just strain real hard and say, relationship better? No. What are we going to have to do? We're going to have to maybe read some books. Huh? Get with the Lord. Get in the word. What does it say about your wife or your husband? You call her queen, she'll call you king. Are y'all with me? You treat him like a king, he'll call you queen. You be mean, I'll leave the rest of that alone. <laughs> How about our careers? You want to change your career? Well... <laughs> You want to change your situation in a career? You think about it. You pray about it, right? The thought process, the soulish realm of the thought process, everything, reasoning, change happens in our thought life first. You with me still, church? Our ministry direction, which we've taken some. And we're going to be taking more coming up soon. Uh, good stuff to announce to you. But before that happened, what happened? We put it to, I got with my leaders, we put it to thought process. We put it to uh, prayer, of course. That's, but you think on it. You, you, you reason, right? For church direction. Uh, and most importantly, spiritually. How many in here today, pay attention to me, please. How many in here today would say, you're not exactly where you'd like to be spiritually. Come on, wave at me. Come on, you really have a hunger. We preached about 
being hungry and thirsty? Am I in a church that has just uh, gone flat and you've had enough and, 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 and you're just going to go through the day to day? That's so yucky. Or am I in a place that is looking forward to an outpouring of the gospel of Jesus? I'm telling you, Paul said, I am confident that when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Spiritually, I've never been more hungry. I've never been more dissatisfied. I've never been more thirsty for the things of God. How about you, church? Huh? Because listen, what's coming, not only what's coming for us, but what's going to come against the body of Christ the enemy's not going to take this last day move of God sitting down. And we cannot sit back and just allow him blow after blow after blow. And then one day wake up and say, oh, we better do something about the enemy. No, we better do something before he starts. Shout, preach it. Paul said it this way. In Philippians 2 5, let this mind be in you. Let what? Listen carefully, look at me, pay attention. Let this thought process be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. What? Let the way Jesus thought be in you. Is, is anybody in here, don't wave at me, don't lift your hand. Is anybody in here right now thinking there is no way that that's possible? Because if you are, your thought process needs to come up. He said, let this mind, let what mind? The way Christ thought when he was on the earth. Wait, how did he think? Here's how Jesus thought. Are y'all staying with me? Sit up straight just a few more minutes. Come on. Listen to this. Paul said in this scripture, Jesus humbled, 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, himself took on servanthood. You say, well, how does this mind that was in Christ also in me do what Jesus did? What did he do? He did 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7. What is that? He humbled himself. Shout humbled. Himself. He took on what? Servanthood. He rolled the care of the sin of humanity. The gospel message is that Jesus took all sin, sickness, poverty, and every kind of disease. Why? So that we don't have to. Oh, say amen to that. You see, listen. Listen to this. Jesus humbled himself and took on the sin, sickness, disease, and poverty of all, say all, mankind. I don't think we get the gravity of that. Do you realize when he walked the earth, he walked the earth, yes, in the divine, but he wouldn't let him call him divine. He said, watch, call me the son of man. Do you know why? Because he was going to have to carry that as a man so that you and I as men and women boys and girls today would not have to carry that but how brother Tommy is a man he was all man I know he was all God but he didn't walk in divinity in this he walked as a pure man filled with the Holy Ghost and this is what he said I'm gonna have to humble myself because there is no way that I am going to be able 
to take the care of the sins, sickness, disease, and poverty of all mankind since Adam and Eve till the last baby born unless I humble myself and do what 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7 says, which is what? Are you ready? Throw it up there again. Ready? Read out loud. Therefore, stop right there. Most translations at care, uh, wait, in due time, see time, most translations have, what's the two dots again? Colon, right? You know what? I'm sorry, I didn't do well in English. I can talk it a little bit, Sha. <laughs> Are y'all with me today? Is this good teaching? It's solid? I know, I know. I've got to stay on track. Okay. So, it usually is a colon there. You know what a colon means in its entire, it, well, it, more so? It means I'm going to explain to you how to humble yourself. You see that? I'm going to explain the first. Therefore, ready, read again. Therefore, humble who? Who humble? What's the uh, underlying thought? Who humble? Who? You do it. Is God going to come and humble you? He put a cancer on him to humble him. I think not. Why would Jesus, 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 Jesus had carried, why did he carry all, say all, sin, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, or anything under the curse and then put it back on us to teach us a lesson? Why would he do that? Then why do preachers preach that? Um, I'm going to leave that alone. There is no way that our Savior would take it and then put it on you. And listen, the devil, he, God does not use the devil. The devil self-employed. You hear me? God does not need the devil to pull off and to, and to do the things that he wants done. He'll do them himself. How does he get things done? By the word of God. Huh? Which liveth and abideth forever. Are you still with me? So how are we going to humble ourselves in, so that God may exalt us as sons and daughters that the world is waiting to see the sons and daughters of God to manifest and show what? That as sons and daughters, we walk in victory, y'all. Oh? That we walk in dominance. We do not get dominated by the things of the world. Is faith rising up in you today? I hope it does. How are we going to humble ourselves? There's only one way Jesus went to the cross. Colt, every time Jesus would think about, he knew they would pluck his beard out. You don't think he knew that? As God, he knew that. As God, he knew, Brother Clint, that this crown of thorns, it was coming. Big old thorns stuck in there. That's one of the most tender areas, especially on mine. Quit clowning. <laughs> Even Blaine Moore. <laughs> he knew they would put nails in his hands, nails in his feet, hung naked before the world in, in, in uh, disgrace. Can any man in their mental thinking take that on and say, oh, I'll do it? Not as a man. Watch this. He had to cast, say cast. I told this to the staff, and this is how I saw it the first time, the revelation I got on this scripture. I saw it this way. Look at me, everybody. Look at me real good. You ever saw Hercules? Huh? Hercules. Now, uh, like the, well, the emblem of Hercules is he's standing with what? The what? Casting means roll. 
So I could see Hercules with Jesus on the side of him. All of us have the cares of the. Have you ever said it feels like the cares of the world is on my shoulders? Oh, only me and Sheila. That's okay. Come on. Am I, am I getting to you now? And can you see Hercules church? Come on, do it with me. Come on, pick up your world. Everybody, pick up your world. Jesus is right by you. Now ready? Roll it over on him. Now just feel, oh, come on, give him a hand clap. Doesn't that feel so good? Well, would you agree then that Jesus had to do the same thing? Hello. He had to roll that over. Every time he thought about the nails, y'all, the cross, he'd roll it over. It had been prophesied by every prophet since the beginning of time what he was going to go through. Say amen to that. He knew the torment. He knew he'd go to hell for three days on our behalf. Why did he go to hell? So that we don't have to. See, mind renewal will start about Friday evening. When you really get hungry for the Lord. And you really get thirsty for an outpouring of His Spirit. You and I will start monitoring what we do starting Friday evening. Because when we come to the house of God, we won't need these people to get us where we need to be. We won't need a sweaty preacher to get us where we need to be. We won't need a, a three-point <laughs> sermon and a poem or a Johnny get them up to get you a you'll get here and you'll be just like the majority of us come on that Friday you started thinking Sunday's coming Saturday all day while you stirred in the pot cooking that mustard greens <laughs> with some ham hock in it uh, you were thinking instead of watching and divulging and regurgitating from Friday to the time you get off work till you come in the house of God. You never even thought of Jesus. He was an afterthought. Then you said, I better, I better worship the Lord. I didn't feel anything at church today. Am I getting in your living room? See, we got to cast the care over on him. That is how we humble ourselves. Why, Pastor Steve? Because if you and I carry the care of this world, then he's not carrying it. And I promise you, you and I were not created to carry the cares of this world. Well, let me just ask you, you've been carrying them thus far. How's that going for you? Huh? So what do we do? We watch 20 straight hours of television and call it resting. And then our, our, uh, our particular uh, person who won for the political office comes up on your news feed and you get so mad you could chew a rattlesnake's head off by mouth. But little to no thought of Sunday's coming and Tara Diagero needs my anointing to get free of a doctor's report. Susan Gibson and Jim will be in the house or and Joshua's at home, been in the hospital. Do you even know that about your church family member? 
No, listen. Josh may be at home feeling like he's got to carry the care of that thing, but he needs a man of God or a woman of God to tell him, you don't have to carry that, buddy. Roll that over on the Lord, and we're going to stand with you by faith. And no, to talk like us, whatever it is, is going to harm you any longer. Say amen to that. See, you know, <laughs> y'all clowning me back there, my friends. Okay, I got you. Hey, do you know we actually get over into a haughty spirit when we try to do something only God was designed to do? It's quiet, just grunt. Here's what care means in our scripture. Are you ready? And am I getting across to you? Did I make anybody mad? If I did, it's an indicator that you need help because you're carrying the care of the world. I'm here to bring you a remedy today, not just to put you, it, it make you, it, it, see, God comes and he, he reveals things that bubble up, but then there's always a remedy. Amen? Chase, can you come play? Because listen, they're tired of hearing me. Say amen to that. Oh, that's amen to hearing me. Oh, I pulled it out of you. Pastor Dave, here's what the definition of care in light of our scripture is today. Care, it's coming up on the screen. Write it down, type it in your phone or on your electronic device. Care, trying to perform or alter in the flesh. What are we? Three parts. Flesh. Soul, spirit. What's most important? Spirit. What gets born again? Spirit. But the soulish realm is fighting for control, right? It wants to do what we were not created to accomplish or manage. Look, at, look with me at Psalms quickly, 55 and 22. Cast. Everybody shall cast. No, no, I said shout. Shout cast. Yes. Thy burden upon the Lord. And what will he do? Give you a more of a burden? Oh my God, how long have I heard it, church? I'm carrying a burden for God. What? I'm carrying, and it sounds so religious, so we add a little bit of preacher voice to it. I'm carrying a burden for the Lord. Well, why, ma'am? Why, sir? Because the Lord put this burden on me. Really? I can't find a scripture that says that. In fact, the scripture says to roll, cast the burden, but you don't know my daughter. You don't know my son. You must not know my God. Hello? Because our God says this. Ready? Read. Read out loud. Read loud, church. Ready? Give the Lord a hand for that scripture. Come on. Come on. Hey. Anybody like the NIV? National? Uh, whatever. NIV. Cast your cares on the Lord. He will sustain the what? Cast your what? What did 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7 say? Roll all of, but I can't do it, Pastor Steve. I got to help God. What? I got to help God. My son's a, a, a knucklehead. My daughter's going nuts out there living in the world. Can you, by worrying about it, change it? One cubit. Huh? But my grandchildren, my great great you don't know, Pastor Steve, how crazy it is on the block that I live on. <sighs> Maybe an indicator why God put you on that block. To do what? Think like Him. Thereby what? Bringing change to your block. But it's bad, bad, bad. Say bad, bad. That's worse than bad. Are y'all okay? The reason 
that most of us are in the condition we're in. And some of you already turned me off. That's okay. But next year at this time, if you're still going through the junk that you're going through, it's because you're thinking it's stinking. Say amen to that. You got to totally change the way you think. Well, how? Like the government? Oh, like you? Like that other preacher on TV? Like what? Like the word. Say the word. Make it go. Arr, go word. <laughs> I got to make laugh because people are looking at me like I am crazy, which I am. Looking, have y'all found the Passion Translation yet? I, uh, Psalms 55, 22, watch this. So here's what I've learned through it all. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord. And measureless grace will sustain, I'm sorry, will strengthen you. Have anybody found the Message Translation? No? Anybody the message translation? Is anybody still in the building? <laughs> Did y'all leave? Say it with me. Pile. Like make a pile. Pile your troubles on God's shoulders. He'll carry your load. He'll help you out. He'll never let good people topple into ruin. 1 Corinthians 2.16 But we have the mind of the anointing. Becca, how does the anointing think? It's always this. Yoke destroying, burden removing. Listen church, look at me good. Huh? Am I right? The anointing is always for yoke destroying, not, not breaking, if it's broken, it can be what? Put back together. Yoke destroying, burden removing power of God. That's what the anointing is for. Hello? Huh? That's what the mind of Christ does. We think healed. We think saved. We think whole. We think complete. We change our thinking to what, how he thinks. How does he think? I'm glad you asked. You ready? I'm almost done. Say he's almost done. Are y'all staying with me? Oh, we wanted sweating and we wanted jumping around. You get this right here? You'll jump around by yourself in your bedroom. Huh? In fact, if you dance in public, you ought to also dance in your living room. I just wanted to say. Hebrews 4, 16. We renew our mind with the word of God. Watch this. Ready? Read. Let us therefore come to the throne of what? Throne of what? And why do we go there? Read. That we may and to help when? When? Do you sometimes... <laughs> Do you sometimes need God or do we always need God? Then what do we do? What's the remedy? How does God think? Listen to this. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God, they always agree. Are you with me? Are you with me? Look at me. We're out of here in just a few moments, but listen. The Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, they all agree as one. And I'm going to tell you what's on their mind 24-7, 365. The grace that Jesus paid for. The only way we're going to be able to take on the things that come against us is by the grace of God. The very power of God. Now to some of you, the moment I say grace, you think salvation. But grace is salvation. But there's a lot more to grace than salvation, my friend. Come on, say amen to that. 
Hebrews 4, 16 tells us, number one, obtain mercy. Say, obtain mercy. Number two, find grace. Say, find grace. There's three kinds of graces. Number one, well, there's a lot. But today, to find the grace, the first grace we find, A, is past grace. What is that? Saving grace. Are you, like me, appreciative to Jesus for what he did? To pay for the saving grace of God. Come on. Are you glad that you're saved? I said, are you happy that you're saved? But it doesn't stop there. There's more to God's grace. Come on now. Past grace and be present grace, which is the empowerment of grace. Do you know every time God anoints you for his service, it is a grace upon your life? Is anybody with me today? I am preaching so hard to get this out. Listen, that grace, I don't have time to get into it, but just let, at some point I want you to read Genesis 1.28. Those of you that are taking notes, Genesis 1.28. It says that God held, he took Adam, put him against the wall or a tree. And before he came alive, he spoke to him. The Bible says, and God blessed them. Eve wasn't there yet, but she was in him. Come on, y'all. And God blessed them. All of God was put in Adam and Eve. Do you know when you and I receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, that all of God, that same blessing, that same, it's not called on this side as much blessing, it's called grace. The anointing, the power of God put inside each and every one of us. There's one more part of grace. C is future grace. What is that? This is the year of the prophetic. There's prophetic grace. Amen? Now I want to get to something. We're going to go. Paul wrestled to close. Paul wrestled with this Christ-like way of thinking from time to time himself. He said, and it'll be up here, 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 9. Lest I should be exalted above measures, is it up there? Through the abundance of the revelations, read with me, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan. Now stop. If you get a, if you get a, a, a version of the Bible that says God sent Satan, throw it in the trash. What? Throw the Bible in the trash. Because God did not send Satan. Satan came because Paul opened up an area in his life page that should never have been opened. I know how, hey, if this is, a, a, if this is crosswise of what you've learned, just chew on it. Amen? Say amen. Watch. It says in the King James, a, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. It doesn't say God sent it. Lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing, what? That thorn in the flesh... I besought the Lord how many times? And what did he ask him? That it might depart from me. And he said to me, what? My, y'all not saying it like this. Listen, my what? Is what? For who? For you and me. We've got to get, that's how Jesus thought. And unless we change our thinking to think like that, we're going to continue to take the care of the world and walk around frustrated, angry, 
anxious. Are you with me? If you're listening, you know it's bubbling up right now by the Holy Ghost. We're going to walk around mad, telling people off. Why? Because we have opened up an area. See what Paul had done? Watch. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. Watch what it says. Before you read, look at me. Remember he had said, well, I'll read it to you. From the, uh, I was in prison, um, uh, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. How can a man take that? Unless he's rolled the care. Come on. Come on. Wait. Let me read some more. Are y'all still with me? Watch. In a, I was a, a night and a day. Dun, dun, dun. Isn't it shark week? I've been in the deep. In journeys often. In perils of waters. In perils of robbers. In per- Oh my God. Of my countrymen. In perils of the Gentiles. In perils of the city. In perils in the wilderness. In perils in the sea. In perils among false brethren. In weariness and toil. In sleeplessness often. In hunger and thirst. In fastings often. In cold and nakedness. But that wasn't the worst of it. Watch this closely. Exiting the building. (laughs) I preach that one. Okay. 40 minutes, I think. 45. Listen. 2 Corinthians 11, 28. Here it comes. Besides all that, those were things that were without. That which cometh upon me daily, the what? what the thorn in Paul's side was he had taken the care of all the churches who's the church for who's the head of the church who then why was Paul taking the care of it he opened himself up because he walked out of grace prove it God said three times to him my grace, the way you got out of the deep, the way you got out of the sharks, da da, do da da, come on, da da. The way you got out of the beatings, the way you got out of that was by my grace. Now, why these churches that have become a thorn in your side because you got out of grace, are you now going to try to do it a different way? What a revelation, huh? Come on. How huh? will you at least give me that? What a. God, that's amazing. You know what he had done, Brother Colt? He had taken on the care. And he got out of grace, which was plenty for him to be set free. Today, as we all stand, Let's bow our heads for just a moment and close our eyes. Please. Because you know where total mind renewal starts? By accepting the saving grace of Jesus. You're here today. You don't know Him as your Lord and your Savior. You've not accepted His blood as the sacrifice for your sins. I'm going to ask you, no one is looking around right now. Please, not a lot of movement. Just stay with me here. There are some people here that possibly need to be born again, saved. If that's you and you'd say, Pastor Steve, you're talking about me. I need to receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. If that's you and you'd say, Pastor Steve, when you pray, pray for me. I want to be born again. What does that mean? You just ask Jesus that the sacrifice that he 
paid at the cross would be for you to come into the family of God. Not a church, though this is a good one, but into the family, the kingdom. If that's you and you say, Pastor Steve, when you pray, pray for me. I want Jesus. Lift that right hand. Would there be any today? God bless that hand. Would there be another? Would there be any other that would say, God bless that hand. Yes, you can put it down. Would there be another that would say, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. We had one brave soul today. Would there be another? Quickly, let's all pray out loud. Dear Jesus, today I come before you. And I ask you to forgive me every sin I've ever committed. Come into my life. Make me a new person. Today I recognize that you gave your life on the cross. You bled, you died, and rose again so that I could be here today and receive you as my Lord. Jesus, I repent. Forgive me. Thank you for coming into my heart. Today I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead. Therefore, today I do declare that I am saved. 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 Give the Lord a great big hand. Will you do it?